So, well, uh, welcome uh, to today's talk on how to simulate real-time failures to test your applications. My name is Dmitry, and I'm excited to share with you valuable insights, best practices, and real-world examples on this critical topic in software development. Before we dive into the content, let me briefly introduce myself. I've been working in the software industry for over 20 years, specializing in software development and application designs. Throughout my career, I have numerous companies and teams improve their ability to handle failures and build more robust applications. Now, let me give you a quick overview of what we will be discussing today. We will start by looking at the importance of testing for failure scenarios, as well as the different types of failures that can occur in a system. Next, we will cover how to set up your testing environment and explore various techniques for simulation of these failures, complete with code examples. We will then discuss best practices for conduction of firewall testing and take a look at some tools and techniques to automate the process. Finally, we will wrap up the talk. So let's begin by discussing why it's crucial to test our applications for firewall scenarios. We are starting our first topic, the importance of testing. Short icebreaker. So, in today's antikinetic world, ensuring the resilience of our applications has become more critical than ever. As we dive into the importance of testing for failure scenarios, we will explore why such testing is essential. What can happen when we overlook this aspect of development and how it contributes to the overall resilience of an application? By simulation of various failure scenarios, we can identify potential weaknesses in our applications and proactively address them. This helps prevent unexpected downtime poor user experiences and potential data loss. In many industries such as finance, healthcare, and e-commerce, the consequences of not careful testing for failures can be catastrophic. Unaddressed failures can lead to lost revenue, legal liabilities, and damage to a company's reputation. Let's take a look at a few real-world examples that illustrate the importance of fair testing. The Amazon Web Services AWS outage in 2017. AWS experienced a significant outage that affected numerous high profile services such as Airbnb, Netflix, and Slack. The root cause was found to be a human error with an incorrect command being executed during routine maintenance. This incident highlights the need to robust failure testing, including testing for human errors and system-wide cascading failures. The second one, the Knight Capital Group trading fires came in 2012. A software glitch in the company's trading system led to a massive loss of around half billion dollars within 45 minutes. The incident nearly bankrupt the company and several as a stark reminder of the potential consequences of not rigorously testing financial system for failures. Thus, examples demonstrate that inadequate testing for failure scenarios can lead to severe consequences that can put a company's future at risk. Furthermore, testing for failure scenarios allows us to better understand how our applications behave under stress and uncover any bottlenecks that might impact performance. It enables us to build systems that can withstand real-world conditions, recover quickly from failures, and uh, maintain security even in challenging situations. 
By prioritizing failure testing, we can effectively manage risk and ensure that our applications can handle unexpected issues. This proactive approach helps instill confidence in our products, both internally and for our users. In turn, it can lead to improved customer satisfaction, increased user trust, and ultimately, better business outcomes. In summary, writers and file testing is crucial to building resilient, reliable, and high-performing applications. That means the demands of modern users and businesses as we proceed through this talk, we will explore different types of failures that can occur in a system and how to simulate them for testing purposes. This will provide you with practical knowledge and tools to strengthen your applications and minimize the impact of failures when they inevitably occur. As we delve deeper into the topic of our testing, it's important to understand the different types of failures that can occur in a system. Being aware of these categories will help us design more effective test scenarios and better anticipate potential issues. Let's take a closer look at each type of failure and how they can impact an application. We start with hardware failures. Uh, these are physical issues that can affect the components of a system, such as servers, storage devices, or network, network equipment. Examples include server crashes, hard drive failures, and network outages. Hardware failures can lead to data loss, degraded performance, or complete system unavailability. To mitigate hardware failures, we can employ strategies like redundancy for tolerance and backup systems. The next one, software failures. Uh, these are problems served within the application code or supporting libraries that can lead to incorrect behavior, crashes, or performance issues. Examples include bugs, race conditions, memory leaks, and unhandled exceptions. Software failures can result in unexpected application behavior incorrect data processing or security vulnerabilities. To address software failures, we need to implement strong code review processes. It's a crucial factor. Perform static and dynamic code analysis and create comprehensive test suites that cover various aspects of the application. Human errors. These are mistakes made by individuals during the development, deployment, or operation of a system. Examples include uh, misconfigurations, incorrect data entry, and deployment errors. Human errors can cause unexpected system behavior, data corruption, or even system-wide outages. To minimize human errors, uh, you should implement uh, automation whenever possible, provide clear documentation and training, and use validation and monitoring to catch errors early. External factors. These are issues outside the direct control of the application or its developers, such as third-party services outages, security breaches, or natural disasters. External factors can lead to system downtime, data loss, or reduced application functionality. To handle external factors, we need to establish uh, contingency plans, monitor external dependencies, and ensure our applications can gracefully degrade when external services are unavailable. Understanding these different types of failures is crucial when designing our test scenarios. In the next section, we will discuss how to simulate these failures for testing purposes, which will enable us to evaluate our application's resilience and performance under real-world conditions. We are starting our next topic, environment and failures. And short as breaker by Andrew Ford.
Now that we have a good understanding of the different types of fires that can occur in a system, let's discuss setting up an environment for fire testing. To ensure that our testing is both effective and safe, it's crucial to create a dedicated testing environment that closely mimics real world conditions. And uh, starting with the first, is about the testing environment. First and foremost, we need to set up an isolated environment that does not interfere with production systems or data. This can be achieved by creating a sandbox staging environment or dedicated test instances. By isolating our testing environment, we minimize the risk of unintentionally affecting live systems, users, or data. Uh, replicate production conditions. Uh, to get accurate results from our fire testing, we should uh, replicate the production environment as close as possible. This includes configuring the same hardware, software, network settings, and data. Additionally, we should simulate realistic workloads and user behavior patterns to ensure that our tests truly represent the challenges our applications will face in the real world. Monitor and work testing activities. Uh, when conducting fire testing, it's essential to monitor and work all activities so that we can analyze the results and identify any issues or errors for improvement. This includes tracking system performance, resource utilization, error messages, and other relevant metrics. By analyzing this data, we can pinpoint weaknesses in our applications and determine the most effective strategies for addressing them. Implement safeguards and rollback plans. As we simulate failures and stress test our applications, it's important to say to have safeguards in place to prevent accidental damage or data loss. This can include using snapshots or backups to restore the environment to its original state, having a robot plans for software deployments, and setting up automated alerts to notify the team in case of unexpected issues. Automate testing processes. To make fire testing more efficient and consistent, we should aim to automate as much of the process as possible. This can involve using testing frameworks, scripting testing scenarios, and integrating testing into the development pipeline. Automation not only saves time and effort, but also reduces the risk of human error during the testing process. By following these best practices for setting up a testing environment, we can ensure that our failed testing is both effective and safe. In the next segment, we will dive deeper into how to simulate different types of failures with code examples, which uh, will provide you with practical techniques for evaluation your application's results and performance under various general conditions. As we move forward, let's discuss the importance of incorporation feedback loops in the testing process. By analyzing the results of our fairing tests and iteratively improving our applications based on these findings, we can continuously enhance their resilience and adaptability. This process involves not only addressing the identified weaknesses, but also refining our testing strategies and scenarios to ensure that they remain relevant and effective as our applications evolve. Furthermore, let's explore the concept of shift-left testing which emphasizes the need to perform fire testing early in the development process. The shift left testing approach refers to conducting tests as early as possible. 
starting from the initial stages of design and development rather than waiting until the final stages of the development circle. By detecting and addressing potential issues as soon as possible, we can reduce the time and effort required for debugging and troubleshooting, ultimately leading to more reliable and robust applications. This proactive approach helps to identify and mitigate risk earlier, resulting in a more efficient development process and high-quality software. And we are starting our topic tools and techniques. And short icebreaker by Bill Gates. So we are going to explore various tools and techniques that can be used to automate failure testing, uh, making the process more efficient and effective. By automating testing procedures, we can reduce human error, save time, and achieve more consistent results. And we start with chaos engineering. Chaos engineering uh, is a discipline that aims to uncover weaknesses in distributed systems by intentionally injecting failures or unexpected conditions. By simulation railroad failures, chaos engineering helps identify and address vulnerabilities in our applications. Tools like Chaos Monkey from Netflix, Gremlin uh, can be used to automate failure injection in your testing environment. Uh, Word and stress testing tools um, can be used to simulate uh, high traffic, highway workloads, and other demanding conditions that can cause failures in our application. Tools like uh, Gemata, Gatling, and Locus can help you automate load testing, allowing you to evaluate your application's performance and results under tests. So, several Robinson frameworks are available for different programming languages and platforms uh, that allow developers to inject files uh, directly into the application code. You can see them. Bateman Simmin. Network failures such as latency, packet loss, and bandwidth limitations can have a significant impact on application performance and resilience. Tools like traffic control for Linux, clumsy for Windows, or network emulators can be used to simulate various network conditions, enabling you to test your application's behavior under different network scenarios. And uh, many modern applications are deployed using containerization technologies such as Docker and Kubernetes. Uh, these platforms offer built-in features and tools for simulation of files such as Kubernetes support Chaos Monkey and Docker's built-in health checks. By leveraging these tools, you can automate file testing in your environments. Uh, here are some code examples to illustrate how these tools can be used for automating failure testing. We're starting with Chaos Monkey. Uh, Chaos Monkey is a Lazarus testing tool developed by Netflix. It randomly terminates instances within a system to simulate infrastructure failures, uh, helping tools uh, build uh, fault tolerant applications. Here we have a uh, small example how to configure house monkey. Uh, Gemeta example. Uh, Gemeta is an open source performance testing tool that can simulate uh, highway awards on servers, networks, or applications. It helps identify bottlenecks and weaknesses in systems under stress, contributing to results improvement. So, by incorporating these tools and techniques into your testing process, you can automate failure testing, making it more efficient and effective. This will help you ensure that your applications can withstand real world failures without compromising performance or security. Next, uh, we'll go over how to simulate different types of failures for testing purposes uh, with real and usable code examples. 
simulation hardware files. One way uh, to simulate hardware files is by using virtual machines or container, containerized environments. For instance, you can use Docker to simulate a failing container. Uh, simulation software failures. Uh, inject exceptions or errors directly into your application code to simulate software failures. It will help you. Uh, simulating human errors, introduce configuration errors or simulate incorrect data entry to mimic human errors. Example, uh, you can see wrong config. Simulation network files. Uh, you can use network simulation tools like traffic control for Linux uh, to introduce network latency or packet loss. and simulation external factors. Uh, introduce uh, failures in uh, third-party services or APIs that your application depends on. And now we are going to highlight some specific topics and I want to give you some suggestions. And small icebreak. So uh, common challenges you can face. Um, common challenges teams face when implementing failure testing include the uh, lack of time and resources, uh, resistance from uh, other team members and the complexity of simulation real world failure scenarios. To overcome these challenges, start by prioritizing the most critical failure scenarios. Uh, gain uh, by informed team members by demonstrating the value of failure testing and use automation tools to make the process more efficient and manageable. The next one, resources uh, read and use. To get started with uh, Carl's engineering as an example, you can refer to resources such as the book Chaos Engineering on the principles of Chaos Engineering uh, from the Chaos Engineering community. Uh, as for best practices, uh, start with small controlled experiments and gradually increase uh, their scope and complexity. Uh, balancing tests and efforts. Uh, focus on identifying and prioritizing high risk failure scenarios and invest in aftermarket tests and procedures. This will help ensure that uh, you are efficiently using your resources uh, while still addressing the most critical aspects of your application resilience. And we have industry-specific failure scenarios. Uh, they depend on the nature of the application and the domain it operates in. For example, in finance, uh, testing for security breaches and data integrity is crucial. While in healthcare, ensuring data privacy and handling emergency scenarios is vital. Identify the unique risks and requirements of your application and tell your failure testing efforts accordingly. And the next one, how we can measure the effectiveness of our failure testing efforts and quantify the improvements uh, made to our application resilience. My best question. To measure the effectiveness of failure testing, establish clear metrics and benchmarks uh, that reflect your application resilience and performance under various conditions. Track improvements over time and compare them against your goals. Metrics could include the mean time to detection, mean time to recovery, and the percentage of successful recovery from failures. Uh, the 
on the next version. How we can integrate further testing into our existing development pipeline. Uh, it can be achieved by incorporating it into your uh, processes after my tests to run as part of your continuous integration builds and perform more extensive failure tests uh, during the staging or pre-production phases. This will help you catch issues early and ensure uh, that your applications are continuously tested for resilience and performance. And the last one. Uh, the question might be, uh, how often should we conduct failure testing and should it be done on a scheduled basis or triggered by specific events? Answering the question, the frequency of conducting failure testing depends on your application's complexity, uh, risk profile, and the pace of development. For some applications uh, conducting failure testing on a scheduled basis, uh, as an example, monthly or quarterly may be sufficient, uh, while for others it may be more appropriate to trigger failure tests based on specific events, such as uh, significant code changes or the introduction of new dependencies. Um, evaluate your application's needs and adapt your failure test and frequency accordingly. So, in summary, in summary, our discussion today highlighted the crucial role that uh, failure testing plays in building resilient, uh, high performing, and uh, reliable applications. Explore the different types of failures that can occur in a system and how to simulate them effectively. Uh, we also discussed best practices. Uh, for conducting failure testing, including setting up a testing environment and uh, creating test scenarios that closely mimic real world situations. Moreover, we delved into various tools and techniques that can be used to automate failure testing, making uh, the process more efficient and effective. Uh, by incorporating these practices into your development processes, and leveraging the appropriate tools and techniques, you can ensure your applications are better equipped to withstand reward failures without compromising performance or security. So now we have a time of QA. Uh, if anyone has questions, please type in the QA section. So, we asked uh, majority of the testing issues are related to connection. Uh, how is that uh, categorized somewhere between human error and external factors? Mm -hmm. So, mm, uh, human errors, uh, as an example, uh, I mean uh, that somebody. Uh, in your team uh, can uh, can make mistake as a uh, can create a bad configuration uh, and external factors uh, are related to external libraries uh, um, or third party applications your application depend on and I'll ask yeah for sure uh, I will share the presentation uh, on the event page and moreover, the record of the video uh, will be attached attached uh, within one week after our event. I wish you good luck and uh, thanks for joining. Uh, I hope you will implement uh, what you learned today into your uh, projects and applications, and it will help you to build your applications uh, more stable and resilient. Thanks, everyone, and goodbye.